Mr. Speaker, today I rise as a patriot to lend my support to the constitutional amendment to allow St. Lucia to have the Caribbean Court of Justice be our final court of appeal. And I do so proudly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, please allow me leave to first of all congratulate Julian Alfred on again showing St. Lucia and the Regent metal in track and field. Mr. Speaker, as the member for Viewfort South said before me, the Caribbean continues to prove that we have the best in the world, Mr. Speaker. We have the best intellects in the world, and of course, we have the best sprinters in the world, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we see that even in our young athletes, that you don't have to be from a particular region, a particular creed or color, to provide some form of service to your country and indeed to your region, Mr. Speaker. And so when I hear talk about the Privy Council having superiority in intellect and being unbiased and being non-political, sometimes I scratch my head, Mr. Speaker simply because as a sportsman. And Mr. Speaker, you are one of those who always follow the history of events. I remember a time when the West Indies cricket team did not exist. And the English cricket team dominated the cricket in the world. And so, Mr. Speaker, a group of men from the region came together and showed them how it is done. And this is what I expect from the Caribbean Court of Justice that we are ascending to today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, too often we forget our history, Mr. Speaker. Too often we forget that we too are powerful individuals, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I sat there today and listen to the member from Miku South speak. And Mr. Speaker, I remember a time playing cricket, Devon League cricket, Mr. Speaker. And when I was going and bat, Mr. Speaker, the guys used to say, Ducky, you're going out for a duck. Little pecong from here to there, Mr. Speaker, and I had to have thick skin. And I'm looking at a presentation from the member from Miku South, and just mere sentences May utterances have him turning red, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just as he turned red, the people of St. Lucia in July 2021 turned red and said, we are confident in this Philip J. Pierre administration, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I have to say to young people that we must understand what our vote stands for, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before the election of July 2021, the Labour Party indicated its intention to put its trust in this regional body, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, do not tell me that in 2023, we now have to start a communication process. Mr. Speaker, our young people, ever since 2001 under the member for Viewfort South, Mr. Speaker, they started their reading and analysis, Mr. Speaker. And when the election was called in 2021, it was in the manifesto of the St. Lucia Labour Party. And Mr. Speaker, young people understand your vote, your vote in a general election is indeed a referendum, Mr. Speaker. It is a symbol of who and what you believe in. And if the St. Lucia Labour Party in July 2021 said to the people that we are moving towards the CCJ, and young, middle-class, elderly came out in support of the St. Lucia Labour Party. Why are you insisting 18 months later that we need to go back to these very same people, Mr. Speaker? Do we have no confidence in our people? Are we saying that most of them, Mr. Speaker, the land of Derek Walcott, Mr. Speaker, have no idea before they voted that the St. Lucia Labour Party would have done this? No, Mr. Speaker. They went in droves, Mr. Speaker, and that is where our two-thirds majority came from. It came from the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've heard some other things being spewed, Mr. Speaker. And sometimes I wonder if people just believe that we are illiterate in this country. Mr. Speaker, I hear people say that with the CCJ, they will have a number, a, a, an amount of political interference, man, as if to suggest 
that Philip J. Pierre and the St. Lucia Labour Party, the member for Castries East, can call on a judge and somehow influence some, some matter, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, in my limited knowledge of the law, I know there is a power of recusal, Mr. Speaker. So if a defendant, Mr. Speaker, is of the opinion that a particular judge is biased against him, he has every right to speak to his legal team and move a motion or move a motion or desire of recusal of that particular judge, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, is this thing new? Mr. Speaker, so when we say that this thing is going to be politically advanced, Mr. Speaker, I wonder if sometimes we do not pay attention to what really happens, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I took a few days off to celebrate getting older, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and social media was ablaze, Mr. Speaker, by hacks wanting somehow to start a political movement. And Mr. Speaker, let's call it what it is, Mr. Speaker. The fact of the matter is that the only desire <coughs> that the opposition wants a referendum is because they need some form of political motivation. They need to score political points. Mr. Speaker, they do this because they have failed the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. They do this because, Mr. Speaker, they have a leader that is woefully unpopular. A leader that refuses to produce a basic document saying what happened at the last election. And so, Mr. Speaker, let's call it what it is. It's politics. It's just show our desire to show some form of strength, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they've gone in all different directions to try to cast aspersions on a government in 18 months that have shown the people that they are genuine about putting them first. And so, Mr. Speaker, they tried it with a member for Castries South. They tried it with a member for Castries East. They tried it with a member of Grosley. All sorts of aspersions. I've never seen, Mr. Speaker, an opposition leader say anything at any time just to see what sticks, Mr. Speaker. There is that just belief that people are stupid, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, you see another attempt foiled because they have no idea what to do, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I hear a special cold attacked a member from Chozel. But I dare say that member is very aware that this Labour Party is doing the right thing, Mr. Speaker. He is very aware, and I need people to ask themselves that question. Knowing the man from Chozel Saltibus. Pwete. Pwete. There's a reason that even after the political leader, the opposition leader, did not show up, that this member decided today he is going to stand down. And we know why, Mr. Speaker. It is because this government is doing the right thing for our people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let's see. Mr. Speaker, I sat here flabbergasted by the noise made by the member for Miku South. Mr. Speaker, there were conversations in social media about constitutional amendment. I'm astounded by the fact that he has chosen to speak against this constitutional amendment that potentially makes life easier for the ordinary man and woman, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Se Mr. Mr. Speaker, as I said, he's playing politics with a mechanism that brings parity to persons of lesser means, Mr. Speaker, to get justice at all levels, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Julia of Lafayette, if she finds herself as an ordinary woman in some battle with her neighbor, and for some reason, all the courts decide that Julia is wrong. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Julia from Lafayette now has a court of appeal that she can, with due time, apply for to seek justice, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Marisan all of Monsepo, if she's walking down the road and somebody decides to rob her and she defends herself and for some reason the courts got it wrong, even she, Mr. Speaker, can apply to the CCJ. Mr. Speaker, rocket of Vesiqui Nobe, a staunch defender of myself who may one day find himself defending me too much 
and may be defending himself and need the CCJ. This, Mr. Speaker, will be for these individuals. Ordinary, Mr. Speaker. Abok grows. Oh, you know them. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, St. Lucia has contributed millions of dollars in financial support to the CCG. Mr. Speaker, I have to ask myself, why didn't the former Prime Minister, in his nearly six years in government, not request, come to this house, not request a referendum on the CCG then? If he was so concerned, why did he do nothing about the Constitution to change it so that it demands a referendum, Mr. Speaker. Why? He did nothing. Mr. Speaker, we know what he was doing. Eh? You know he was selling our land, millions to Lockerbie, horses before people, not one room or hotel built, scandal after scandal. Globe chatting, spending thousands in a hotel. But Mr. Speaker, you were there for almost six years, five years plus. If you had that conviction, why didn't you do nothing then? Mr. So Speaker, I won't stay long because the member for Viewford South, that was a masterful innings, Mr. Speaker. Masterful. Mr. Speaker, it had everything in it, as you know, Mr. Speaker. And so, we know the facts, we know the history, we know what happened, and we know what this government has to do, and we are doing today, Mr. Speaker. I'm very honored to have our next generation of legal minds, Mr. Speaker. I was honored to have them here today, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, once we get this done, Mr. Speaker, they will be happy to know that case filing and management, case management, is done electronically. Mr. Speaker, the CCJ took the lead on the technological advancement of the law, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, it will make it easier for them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm very confident that in our meets earlier today, at least one, in fact, all of them, Mr. Speaker, because of what we are doing today, can have as the ambition sitting on the Caribbean Court of Justice, Mr. Speaker. One of them here today, Mr. Speaker. And so I look forward to this happening, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Sometimes, as young people, we tend to go with the flow, Mr. Speaker. And we tend to just go with what we hear certain individuals in society say and do. But let's just think about it for a moment, Mr. Speaker. Why are we so afraid? Mr. Speaker, I was in Grenada for a short time, and Mr. Speaker, every time I looked around, it was almost as if I saw a St. Lucian, Mr. Speaker. These people looked like me, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, these people sounded like me. I remember being in Tobago. And of course, Soka Monarch was hot at that time. We went to a, you know, you heard the music. Mr. Speaker, the people in Tobago, they danced just like me. They probably can't whine as good as I could. <laughs> but they danced just like me. That's what you're doing in Grenada. <laughs> just like me, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, they sounded similar to me. So why are we so afraid of these people, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I went to Grambling State University on a scholarship. And Mr. Speaker, our international day, we stood together as young people. We understood that staying together, we could have achieved more than believing that there was a superior class or superior type of people. Mr. Speaker, right after we celebrate 44 years, we want to signal to people that somehow our people are inferior. I cannot teach my twin girls that. We are the creme de la creme. We get it done. We've shown in times past that we can do more once we come together as a region. And so, Mr. Speaker, the fact is, the Constitution of St. Lucia requires two-thirds majority. The framers understood that you needed to have this level of agreement on this. And this sits in the House today, Mr. Speaker. They could have said half, could have said 50%, but two-thirds, it sits here today. 
So, Mr. Speaker. As a member for Grosley, representing the Gunjaman, representing the Richman, representing white, black, Indian, representing the middle class, Mr. Speaker, I stand today and unreservedly endorsing the amendment to have the CCJ become our final court of appeal. I do so, Mr. Speaker, because it is to the benefit of all of us. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.